Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones, and welcome to the ninth anniversary of my channel's launch. Now, whether you're new to my channel or have been around from the start, I've had something of an ongoing tradition when it comes to these anniversary videos. Basically, I bounce back and forth between covering the mascot platformer Glover and covering wrestling games. A bit of an odd tradition, I know, but it probably made sense to me at the time. If it wasn't obvious from me choosing to cover Rumble Roses back in 2022, I am getting a bit burnt out on the wrestling stuff, so today I'm covering something that's a little different, a little far-fetched, a little out there. Today I'm covering a wrestling game that's more... like a dragon. Before I get started, just a quick and friendly request that if you like what I do, please consider commenting, subscribing, and checking out the Patreon. Alright, let's do this. I absolutely love the Like a Dragon franchise, and I've enjoyed basically every title I've played. Unfortunately, two very specific games released for the PSP never officially made their way overseas. However, thanks to the dedicated efforts of Team K4L, we do have a fan translation of both of these titles, and today, I'm aiming to look at the first one. Before I get too into things, I should probably discuss this game's title, because there's obviously a bit to cover with this franchise and its naming conventions. In Japan, the game is known as Kurohyo Ryoga Gotoko Shinsho, which roughly translates as Black Panther, Like a Dragon, New Chapter. For a while, Western fans just called the game Yakuza Black Panther, but as we all know, Like a Dragon has become the proper moniker even in Western releases. The release trailer for the fan translation on Team K4L's YouTube channel refers to the game as Like a Dragon, Black Panther, but actually booting up the translation from them has the title screen saying Kurohyo, Like a Dragon, New Chapter. So yeah, I'll probably bounce between names a bit for the rest of this video. Unlike most of the games in the franchise, Kurohyo wasn't developed by RGG Studio, but instead by Sin Sophia a company that has handled a lot of wrestling games, but is probably best known as the developers of the Def Jam series and the Style Savvy series, as well as its spiritual successor, Fashion Dreamer, on the Nintendo Switch. And while that may sound like a weird combination, it also sounds like the perfect recipe for a team to develop a Like a Dragon title. Now, one thing I just want to get out of the way now is, like, this game looks great. I know the PSP had a lot of good looking games on it, I'm not trying to imply that I think it shouldn't look great, and I also acknowledge that maybe some of this is because I was playing on an emulator, but I was genuinely impressed with how good this game looked for the system. Like just solid points right there. Solid. The game opens up the way many Yakuza stories do, with our protagonist, Tatsuya Ukyo, crossing under the red arch of Tenkaichi Street. Right off the bat, you may notice the distinct comic book style animations for the game's cutscenes, and something else that may immediately strike you as different is that... Tatsuya kinda sucks. Like, in a good way. Most of the Yakuza protagonists have this thing going for them where they're immediately likable and have a heart of gold. Tatsuya, though, is rash, crude, violent, short-tempered, and even his supposed friends have a hard time putting up with him. He's far less likable than the playable characters we're usually introduced to in the series, and that made him feel really unique and admittedly made me really excited to see where his character arc was going to go. Tatsuya's mission right now is to try and shut down a local loan sharking ring by beating the ever-loving crap out of Naoki Toda, the Yakuza running the place. Unfortunately for him, Tatsuya was out sick the day they handed out the memo that says like a dragon protagonist don't kill people because... <laughs> oh dang. He did. Tatsuya tries to flee the city, but gets caught by Tota's boss, Ryotaro Kuki, who has the security footage of Tatsuya supposedly killing Tota and blackmails him into accepting a deal. If Tatsuya can defeat 10 opponents in a row in an underground fighting ring called Dragon Heat, he's free to go. And that's basically it. Nearly every chapter in the game involves doing a bit of busy work before being called to the arena to fight your next opponent. It sounds a bit simple on the surface, but trust me, the game uses this framework to its advantage and manages to have a lot of great character moments, especially with Tatsuya as a protagonist. At first, Tatsuya is fine with just beating people up and getting out of the tournament as soon as he can, but as he interacts with the other fighters and grows closer to the tournament staff, most notably Taizan, the doctor, and his apprentice Saki, he starts to question why he fights in the first place and starts to grow as a character. Speaking of fighting, we should probably talk about the main gameplay mechanics, huh? 
like a Panther, operate somewhat like a combination of Def Jam and other Like a Dragon games. Tatsuya has two attack buttons, but instead of light and heavy attacks, it's punches and kicks, and you can press up or down to aim your attacks in a specific direction. You can grab onto opponents to use some specific moves or heat actions, and you can still pick up things like traffic cones or milk crates to bash your opponents. You can also parry enemy attacks, but um, I'll admit I'm really bad at it. It definitely feels more like a wrestling game than a Yakuza title, but it also shouldn't feel too unfamiliar to fans of the series either. For example, one mechanic New Chapter borrows from wrestling games is that you can target specific body parts, like arms, legs, or the head, and injuring those parts can really turn the tides of battle. I think my biggest complaint with these fights is I do feel like the camera is usually a bit too close, like I wouldn't mind if they just took a couple of steps back there. Just like in other Like a Dragon games, Black Panther has you getting attacked by random grunts around the city, many of which I was able to dispatch with a single charged up punch, which makes them more of an annoyance than anything. But you do get money and experience points for every fight, both of which you're going to need to strengthen Tatsuya, so it's usually worth it. One of Kurohyo's main gimmicks is that you can swap between different fighting styles, but you don't just get three or four styles like some kind of Yakuza wimp, no. You get 20 styles to choose from, and you can swap between them outside of combat. Every style has its own pros and cons, with things like buffs to your kick damage but having worse countering, and you're likely to find one that works for you. Some of these styles you'll get through story progression, others you can unlock in sub-stories, and some you get by reaching certain levels with a combination of styles, like unlocking Kempo by leveling up both boxing and karate. I like to experiment and level up different styles while I'm roaming the streets of Kamurocho, but I usually use one I know I'm more comfortable with when it comes time for one of the boss fights, and I've gotta say, the Dragon Heat tournament is where this game really shines. For starters, it's just super easy to get sucked into the theatrics and presentation of the tournament. Like, you try listening to DJ Rukio's ringside commentary and tell me you aren't feeling hyped as heck. <laughs> Something that I find kind of baffling is that Tatsuya's nickname in Dragon Heat is the Mad Dragon of Kamara. Like, I get that it's the name of the series and all, but why's he gotta be like a dragon? Tatsuya wears what looks like a black velvet tracksuit, and the game is called Black Panther. I'd have much rather he had a panther-based nickname to help him stand out instead of just giving him another dragon title. Now, I'm not going to go over all the boss fights in this game, but each one stands out and is really unique, even in a situation where you might be re-fighting an earlier rival. Many of the opponents are not just random people either, but people strongly connected to Tatsuya's past like a former teacher of his whose fighting style allows him to parry almost any normal attack you throw at him, so you need to focus on dodges or grab moves. Another opponent later, the Mad Dog of Okinawa, knows that Tatsuya recently injured his foot, so throughout the fight he'll intentionally target your legs. None of the boss battles in this game just feel like spongier versions of the random brutes you beat up in the city, and I really enjoyed that. Honestly, the boss fights were so unique and fun that they kind of made me resent the stuff you have to do leading up to them. Like I said, most of the chapters are just kind of busy work. Occasionally you have to do a police chase where you just run along a safe path trying to dodge cops, and sometimes you do the most boring tailing missions. I am not losing him, he's right freaking there. Do you need glasses, Tatsuya? Like, it's never awful or anything, and it gives you a good opportunity to do sub-stories, get experience points, and of course get some story beats that help create the context for those boss fights in the first place, which strengthens the story. I just wouldn't blame anyone for letting their minds wander to what the next Dragon Heat fight is going to be like as you're booking it down Shichifuku Street to lose the cops for the eighth time. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, one of the high points of the story is Tatsuya's growth as a character. His friendship with Saki and discovering his own reasons for fighting through interacting with his opponents gives him a really good and satisfying character arc. He's still a short-tempered teen, but that gives him his own distinct charm that really helps him stand out from Kiryu, Ichiban, Akiyama, or most of the other protagonists. 
Speaking of exploring Kamurocho, this next statement is gonna cause most of you to roll your eyes and say, yeah, no duh, but Kurohyo has quite a bit less in it than you'd get from one of the console entries in the franchise. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is not to try and belittle Black Panther for not having a lot of content, but to emphasize how even with that obvious information, you may find yourself impressed by how much is here. I know I certainly was. You still have basically all of Kamurocho to explore, even if it is all pre-rendered backgrounds like in the earlier games. There are still tons of sub-stories to complete, some of which have their own ongoing story paths like Tatsuya dealing with some of the gangs in the area, while others are just the lovably ridiculous plots we know and love, like Tatsuya beating the crap out of his high school's baseball team only for the coach to scold the team and give a heartfelt speech about how they need to put that passion into the game. And you do even get to encounter a few familiar faces as a fan of the franchise in some of these sub-stories, which is always fun. You can still eat at a bunch of restaurants and play mini-games like baseball, karaoke, bowling, working security at a bikini bar, crane games at the arcade, working at a ramen joint, hanging out with a decent selection of hostesses, and there are even ongoing collectible quests like these six brothers that hand out trading cards of their favorite sexy gravure models, or the homeless guy who tasks you with finding cats in exchange for more affordable training. Personally, I think every cat you find should have a little JPEG of a photorealistic kitten or something, but I understand they had limited disk space. My point is that I really appreciated how much there was to this game, and Kurohyo absolutely is a fully fleshed out Like a Dragon experience on the PSP. While I do own a physical copy of the game, I played the translation patch through an emulator, which was probably for the best because I think this game would drain your battery pretty quickly on native hardware, especially when you're just sitting through some of the game's lengthier cutscenes, and trust me, some of these cutscenes are long. I personally loved Kurohyo and would absolutely be down for seeing it make a comeback one day. RGG Studio does revisit a lot of their old wells, like with the Kiwami series, the remastered trilogy, the Ishin remake, and there are supposedly even talks about a Kiwami 3 and remasters of Kenzon or Dead Souls. So while it's not impossible that one day we could see the portable adventures of Tatsuya Ukiyo on modern hardware, I do think it's pretty unlikely. Since these titles weren't directly made by RGG, they're kind of the black sheep of the family. Or should I say, the Black Panther? <laughs> so yeah, that's Kurohyo. It does enough things right to make it a worthy entry in the beloved Like a Dragon franchise, and it does enough unique things to help it stand out as a worthwhile title on its own. I had a really great time with this game, and if you're a Yakuza fan who hasn't checked it out for yourself, I'll leave a link to Team K4L's website in the video description. And hey, if people are interested, maybe I'll talk about the sequel one of these days. But yeah, I'm really glad I took the time to check out this game for myself, and it's one I can definitely recommend. What do you think of this title? Have you played it for yourself? Do you think I'll ever cover a normal Yakuza game on this channel? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. I want to take a moment to thank you all for joining me today, and honestly, thank you for joining me over the past 9 years of doing videos on this channel. I'm still having a blast, and as the channel continues to grow, I hope all of you are still enjoying the stuff that I'm putting out. I mean, I assume you at least kinda liked this video if you're still here. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for everything, and until next time, take care.